Hi guys, welcome back to Tailair, and today I'm going to be showing you how to fly a VOR approach without having to program it into the GPS, so we're flying it raw data. Okay guys, so here we are established in the normal cruise, 2000 feet. We're currently eastbound over South Florida, and we're going to be flying the approach uh, VOR runway 12 right into Vero Beach. Here's a quick look at the approach plate. So you can see here that it's all centered around the uh, VOR here called Treasure VOR. Uh, so what we'll need to do is make sure that we've got our navigation aids all set up correctly. Um, before we do that, though, we'll have a quick discussion about what we're going to do here. So we're going to be joining the, um, the most north uh, bound initial approach fix here, which is called Malbso. Um, which is a 7 DME point from the VOR and then doing what's called a DME arc. Uh, and we'll be doing that on um, raw data, uh, so make it a bit more interesting and a bit more challenging as well. Um, so we'll just come back around uh, westbound here and then uh, we'll have a look at setting up the approach. So we're going to need to make sure we've got the VOR tuned in and I'm going to have that tuned in on uh, Nav 1 and Nav 2 and uh, the reason for that is because uh, that will come in useful as we're going around the arc so let's have a quick look at the GPS so here we go uh, so we've got the approach plate here we've got the VOR frequency 117.3 so what we're going to do is tune that in so we're going to push the small knob in here we're going to have 117.3 tuned in on nav 1 like that and I'm going to tune also on nav 2 so 117.3 here on the second GPS as well now this is important we need to make sure that this here is in VLOC mode because it goes between GPS and VLOC and you can see here that if we've got it in GPS mode it changes the OBS here and that will be looking at the GPS for nav information which we won't have because we're not tuning it in so we need to make sure We've got it in VLOC mode, which is VOR localizer mode. Um, so that's important to make sure that we're tracking the right thing. So we've got that tuned in. What we need to do is identify this now. Uh, so we're looking for the TRV uh, Morse code, which we can see on the approach plate here. So let's listen to it. Okay, that sounds right. So we can use nav1. And Nav2 also is uh, identifying, so we can use both of those uh, for the uh, VOR information. So uh, what we'll do now then is we will uh, quickly go through the approach uh, plate as we head uh, sort of in the general right direction towards the VOR. So we've got uh, VOR 1-2 uh, right at Vero Beach. The chart is in date. And we can see that the VOR frequency is 117.3, which we've got tuned and identified on both radios. Final approach course of 118, which we will set up a little bit later. We've got a touchdown zone elevation of 23 feet. We've got some notes here saying circling for runway 30 right is not available at night. And then another uh, instruction about using the altimeter which is not based on the airport and what to increase the MDAs by. We don't need to worry about that for today uh, because we've got the Vero Beach uh, altimeter setting set. Uh, the missed approach is climbed to 500 feet then it's a climbing left turn to 2000 feet heading 360 on the 057 radio from the Treasure VOR to ECOS intersection and hold. We've got our frequencies here which we're not going to be using today. Now for the for the actual route, uh, so we're going to be heading over the Treasure VOR. We're going to head outbound on the 350 radial to 7 DME. Then we'll be flying this DME arc here, which basically means that we're going to be doing like a circle pattern around the VOR, maintaining seven miles as we continue towards the southwest. There, uh, it'll be it'll make more sense when I actually do it, and you can see what's going on. We we'll then go around to the inbound track of 118, and then we'll head inbound towards the Treasure VOR cross over the VOR, then go outbound from the VOR heading towards the runway. Um, so that's how it's going to work. 
So let's get inbound now towards the uh, treasure VOR. So we've tuned it. Um, now we need distance information from the VOR. Now I would normally set a direct track to the VOR, but unfortunately that's not uh, working for me today. It seems to be deleting the direct track so we can't get the distance information. So we're not going to use that today. What we're going to do is we're going to use this nearest feature here. So in order to get to that from the navigation mode, you're going to use the uh, big knob on the right side until you get to nearest. There we go, there's nearest. And then you can use the small knob here to navigate through the various uh, nearest features. We want the nearest VOR, which is treasure VOR here, 11.6 miles from it. You can see that in the distance column here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start making our way towards the VOR. So it looks like about a 330 or so course inbound. Yep, about 345. So what I'm going to do now is on the uh, autopilot here, I'm going to select the nav mode. That will track us towards the VOR on that radial and as we continue the briefing. So that's going to take us nicely towards the, uh, the VOR there and we can watch it do that. Now uh, we can continue briefing. So if we have a look now at the um, altitude planning uh, window here on the approach plate. So we're at 2000 feet at the moment. We need to be at least 1500 feet as we go around the arc. After that, uh, we're going to head inbound to harbor, which is 4 DME from the treasure VOR. We need to be 1500 feet or above there as well. After that, we go towards the VOR, which is uh, a 1200 or above restriction. And then continuing down the 3.07 degree uh, glide path towards the uh, VDP there, which is the visual descent point. Uh, which is the point that we really want to be visual by in order to continue down that nice uh, 3.07 degree glide path towards the runway. If we don't get visual we need to level off at the minimums or the MDA here which is 400 feet and we then continue at 400 feet until we get to the missed approach point which is 3.5 DME from the treasure VOR. If uh, we've got to that point and we haven't got visual then we need to do the missed approach procedure which we've already talked about. So that's the um, that's the approach uh, plate briefed. Um, I hope that makes sense. Now what we're going to do as we get a bit closer to the VOR is uh, we will need to track three, the 350 radial outbound. So at the moment we are tracking uh, inbound uh, to on a 336 uh, bearing. So that means that when we get over the VOR we're going to need to make a slight right turn uh, outbound 350 and then uh, basically go out for seven miles to join this uh, DME arc. So that's basically um, how we're going to fly it. Uh, for the configuration for the approach I'll aim to be uh, flaps 10 and 80 knots and I'll probably configure at some point around the treasure VOR there. So I might come down the initial part of the descent a little bit faster and then slow it down around the treasure VOR. Then we'll be looking at, uh, once we're visual, going to four flat 65 knots continuing towards the, uh, the runway threshold. I hope that all uh, makes sense to you. Now all we have to do is maintain straight and level flight until we get uh, to the treasure VOR. So we can actually skip forward a little bit uh, when we're a little bit closer to the station. Okay guys so we have now got about four miles to go until we get to the uh, VOR. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the aircraft into heading mode and that will maintain the current heading uh, and I'll be able to explain to you what's going to happen with the, uh, with the VOR as we get a bit closer to it. What I'm also going to do is uh, have some, uh, something set up on the, on the second OBS here. Uh, so the reason that I tuned uh, Treasure VOR initially uh, into NAV2 is because I knew I was going to need it a bit later on on the arc. So you can see there we're going to be heading out 350 until we get to the 7 DME point. Uh, so if we were going to be if we were heading inbound on that radio that would be 170 inbound. What I can do is uh, I'm just going to have set up in here 160 uh, which would be a little bit further around the arc than, uh, than the start point. And what that's going to allow me to do is track my progress as we go around this DME arc. It'll make more sense as we get closer, as we get on the arc, and then you'll be able to see what I mean. And I'll explain it to you when we get there. So just ignore that for now. 
now as we get uh, now we're about 1.8 miles away from the uh, treasure view uh, what we'll notice when we get a little bit closer is that that needle there is going to become more sensitive and what you'll see is it will start to swing out now it's important to remember that when you're within about a mile from the VOR at this kind of altitude it's not worth trying to correct because um, it's basically become oversensitive uh, so you just hold the heading and then uh, see what happens when you get to the other side now we are going to be tracking 350 outbound so when we get over the station I will be making a right turn, slight right turn to 350 so you can see now within a mile from the station the needle for the VOR now will swing out to the right all the way to the right by the look of it um, and I'm not going to make any correction for that because I'm very close into the station there we go so we're pretty much over the VOR now what I am going to do though is I'm going to make a right turn to 350 which is my outbound uh, track from the VOR I'm also going to set the OBS now to 350 for the outbound track and uh, that's basically I should come back into the middle more or less in a second and then I'll wait till I'm outside the mile before I make any corrections there we go so that should hopefully just about centralize itself I'll just leave it another 15-20 seconds before making any corrections there you go so we're now outside of the mile uh, so you can see that we're a little bit off so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a few degrees to the right and that should centralize the needle just fine so then what, once we're established on to uh, that radial uh, what we'll do then is we'll just continue flying that radial outbound until we get to 7 miles then what we're going to do is make a left turn 90 degrees to the radial that we've been tracking so it's going to be 260 outbound there's the 350 so I come back to the 350 heading now. I'm just going to use the navigation feature now on the autopilot. I'll be disconnecting the autopilot in a moment anyway. So we continue all the way out now to 7 miles and then we make a left turn 90 degrees to the radial that we're tracking here that we join the arc on. So it's going to be 260 and then we'll be using a technique which is called the twist 10 turn 10 which I'll explain to you as we get a little bit uh, closer to the arc. I will also be leading the turn slightly so I want to make sure that I start the turn onto the arc about a mile or so before I get there so I'll be making that turn at around six miles and that should establish if I do a nice rate one turn uh, which is when the uh, wing of the turn coordinator here is uh, down on, t on this left marker here uh, that would be a rate one turn which is the rate of turn that we should really do all the time when we're flying on instruments so we've got a couple of miles to go before we start to make that turn I've already bugged the heading uh, so I know where I'm going to be turning to and uh, we're nicely on this uh, on this radial as well uh, so we now just have to just wait until we get to the correct uh, the correct DME to start the turn Okay, guys. So now we're coming up to uh, we're coming up to six miles. I'm going to take the autopilot off. We'll fly it manually from here. And once we get to six miles, uh, I'm going to start that left turn inbound on the arc. And what I'll be looking for is the uh, OBS number two to start to become centered. There's six miles. So I'm going to make that left turn now. Nice rate one turn towards the 260 heading keeping an eye on that uh, DME information across on the GPS here so we're at 6.4 miles that's looking quite good by the time we finish the turn it should be just about on 7 6.6 .6, that's looking okay Six point seven. I'm gonna roll out when we get to the 260 heading and I'm slightly inside the arc so I'll just maintain this uh, heading until it reaches 7 miles and now what we're going to do is you'll see that the uh, CDI on OBS number 2 here is starting to become centered so what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist that now so that it shows the 150 uh, track to the station and 
what that does is it allows me to track my progress around the uh, around the arc here. And I can see here that I'm now pretty much at the 7. So what I'll do now is I will turn 10. So I've twisted 10, now I'm going to turn 10. So come to the left by 10 degrees. And that should just about keep us on the arc. You can see now the 150 bearing to the station is starting to become centered. So we're now getting slightly outside the arc. So I'm going to twist 10 again. Oops, wrong way. So that's showing 140. Turn another 10. So that's going to be 240. And I'm going to go slightly more than that actually because I'm getting slightly outside the arc. So maybe I'll go for 230 on the heading. And that should hopefully bring us in a little bit further. The inbound course is 118. So I'm going to set that on OBS number 1. You can see I'm 7.1 now, uh, so what I'll do is I'll just make a little bit of a, another turn just inside that heading bug, just to make sure we don't drift outside of the arc while I'm changing the OBS. 118 inbound is now set on the OBS. 7.1, that's looking quite sensible. I'm going to twist another 10 to 130. I'm going to turn another 10. To about 220 there or 215 that should work and you can see that the DME is staying at 7 so uh, we are looking pretty good with that and now uh, as we uh, are pretty much coming around towards the inbound track what I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye on OBS 1 and once that starts to become centered I'll start that left turn into inbound towards the uh, runway or towards the VOR. So 6.8 miles. I'm not going to make any sort of turn at the moment. I'm just going to now wait until the uh, OBS number one starts to come in, the CDI on OBS number one. And because I haven't done a turn, that DME should gradually start to come out. There's the uh, OBS number one CDI coming in. I'm going to start that left turn now for the inbound track. And we're looking for 118 uh, thereabouts on the heading, plus or minus any wing correction. So I'll set my heading book for that. And I'm going to roll out a little bit early just to establish myself onto that correct uh, course there. We're established on the inbound track now, so I'm going to just reduce the power slightly and come down to the 1500 feet uh, platform altitude that we need for harbour. So I've just taken out a couple of hundred RPM there and I've let the nose come down and uh, I'm just allowing the aircraft to descend. I'm just going to come to the right slightly just to make sure we re-establish that uh, inbound track as it was starting to drift away. But we are to the right side of where we need to uh, be, so it will come into the middle eventually. So I'm not going to chase it. And four miles is where Harbour is, so you see we're at 4.8 and we need to be 1500 feet or above at that point. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Has the uh, CDI centered, so I'm going to now bring the uh, heading back around to approximately the 118 heading for the track. I didn't set much wind in the sim, so it should be more or less the same. So we're 1600 feet, 4.2 miles to go to Treasure VOR. Uh, so harbour points at 4, so that's looking good. Yeah, we're just crossing harbour now, 1500 feet, that's looking quite nice. And you can see we're slightly to the right side of the track now, so I'm going to come to the left side of the heading bug. So that we don't drift off of the uh, final approach track. When that starts to become centered, come back to the right to the 118 thereabouts heading in order to maintain that track. All right, now we're looking 1,200 feet or above at the treasure view. We've got three miles to go, and we've got 200 feet to lose. So what we'll do if we uh, hit, start hitting that 1,200 feet a little bit early is we'll use that as an opportunity to slow down. 
I'm going to reduce this throttle slightly which will allow us to actually slow down a bit uh, in order to configure the uh, flaps 10 uh, configuration. So we've got two miles to go to the treasure VOR, but 1200 feet, so I will pitch up here 1250 feet and uh, that will allow me to maintain this altitude until we get over the top of the VOR and we will take this opportunity to slow down and retrim the aircraft. There we go, so we're at 80 knots now. I'm going to maintain 80 knots and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start to configure the aircraft. So we're at 1250 feet, I'm going to use flaps uh, 10, there it goes. Just going to stop that ballooning. And we're now one mile from the treasure VOR. So what we'll do is, uh, well actually now I've ballooned 50 feet, I'm going to just start the descent again. Now I'm not going to make any corrections now for the uh, for the track because of that, that VOR needle is going to be very sensitive. What I am going to do is reduce the power and uh, we will start down because we now over the VOR we needed to be 1200 feet or above which we've made now we can come down so I'm going to reduce the power to around about 1500 RPM and establish I'd say at least a 500 feet per minute rate of descent it's a fairly short final approach make sure we're trimmed for that down we go uh, so now the numbers will start increasing on the VOR instead of decreasing because we've just crossed over it and now we're tracking backwards on the VOR. I'm a little bit now to the right of the track. So I'm going to come to the left slightly, just slightly because we're still very close to the VOR. In order to re-establish onto that final approach track, there we go. Re-establish that uh, reference heading. And now it's just a matter of continuing down the uh, the glide path to the minimums which was 400 feet and uh, we can see here that the VDP was at 2.4 so we want to be hitting the minimums around about that around about that level so we're at 1.4 so we've got a mile to go and we've got about 300 feet to lose so that's looking about right so it's really just a matter of maintaining this uh, this track and this rate of descent now until we hopefully get visual. I'm going to move the visual uh, the visuals up so that I can uh, hopefully see the runway coming up. So 400 feet is the minimum. We can't go below that until we are visual. So can we see the runway is the question. So here's the VDP. I can see the runway threshold uh, identifier lights there, you can see them flashing away. So what I'm going to do now is continue down the approach. I'm going to establish four flaps. There we go. Four flaps and then it's just a matter now of maintaining the three degree glide path. Go for about 60 knots over the threshold. There you go, and then we can ease the aircraft into ground effect. Around here, close the throttle, hold off. And there we go, we are down. And that is the VOR approach, raw data.